Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, I will be showing you how to install a Tick Performance Master Cylinder. Um, mine is leaking, so uh, I believe mine's leaking at least, so we're gonna go in there and find out. Hopefully it's not the brake booster, but uh, if it is, we have some options on eBay right now, and uh, let's get started. So, first thing you're gonna need to do is get in your car and pop your hood. And I'll show you what we're trying to locate, where it's at, and what we're doing. So, once you have your hood popped, come up here, open it up, and where we are trying to get is buried right back here. It's down here in this little hole. So, what we're going to have to do is remove the strut tower brace. Um, we might remove this, I believe this is a, a computer, PCM maybe and uh, maybe the bracketry for the reservoir holder, which are down here. And then inevitably, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to remove the brake booster itself, which there should be um, a rod connected to your brake pedal and four nuts on the inside of the firewall underneath your dash. So shouldn't be too hard, but let's get started by removing our strut tower bar. Now, I have an aftermarket strut tower bar. I believe this is a Petters, um, but if you have a factory one, should just be nuts up top. So let's get this moved out of the way. We'll go from there. I'd also like to go ahead and apologize now because this video is gonna be pretty choppy uh, because I really wanna show you guys every step that I'm taking in order to do this uh, so you can do this properly uh, on your 2004 to 2006 Pontiac GTO. I didn't really see any videos on YouTube. Um, so I really wanna make an in-depth video. So if this is gonna be long, I apologize, but this is, this is something that I would like to know if I were trying to do this as well. But uh, we got the strut tower bar out of the way. Um, like I said, mine's a, a Petters, it's adjustable, so I was able to take it off and just move it up out of the way. Um, however, you would have to remove um, the two or three nuts on, on both sides and then pull yours entirely out of the way. But the next step is it looks like I'm probably gonna take this off in order to move my reservoir then I will probably continue down to do this bracket and this bracket to just see if I can move um, all this stuff out of the way. Like I said, I'm not entirely sure that this needs to be moved. Um, the wires are um, running through back over here. Uh, if anything, I might take this entire computer out of the way and maybe put it over there um, to, to move the wires along the back side of the booster once I pull the booster out. So, um, yep, that's the next step. We'll, we'll get these off right here and uh, I'll be right back. All right, so uh, the very first thing I removed was the reservoir. Uh, it was two tins. Um, they were nuts, nuts on studs on this bracket beside the, the booster. Um, so then the next one was going to be a 13 bolt that was into the front of this, uh, the booster itself. And then the last two were 13 millimeter nuts down there that held uh, all that bracketry on. So I just pushed the reservoir out of the way and then removed both the brackets to get better access. Um, now it looks like we have a plug right here. Um, GTOs are kind of finicky uh, with when it comes to like electrical things. Um, so what I'm going to do just to be 100% uh, safe on this is I'm going to remove the negative terminal on my battery. Um, removing the negative terminal, uh, make sure that uh, there's no shorts or anything when you go to plug this back in. And it never hurts uh, when you're doing electrical things to your, for your vehicle anyway to go ahead and unplug uh, your battery, your negative terminal on your battery. So let me get that out of the way and then we'll start working on the booster. I did want to point out too that when you when you buy this from Tick uh, or wherever you buy it off of, if it is complete in the package, it will come with very detailed instructions. Um, I can put these right here uh, just so you guys can maybe pause the video and take screenshots. But it does come with, with very good instructions. However, I'm more of a visual learner and um, this... Uh, this is a great place for me to start, but I'm just trying to help other people out uh, who are also visual learners. So um, the, the next thing it does say, though, is to go ahead and remove your uh, horn. And your horn is actually tucked back here in this little corner. It's right back here. I'm going to get a light on there. But that's your horn, and there is a T30 security bit right there. That is 
blowing that out. Wow. There's a T30 security bit right there. We're gonna have to remove that in order to get out of the way. And back to this sensor over here. Let's see if I can get this put down. The sensor that was connected in over here is this guy. Yep, this guy. And uh, it looks, if you guys have ever done anything with injectors, it looks like an injector clip. So in order to get this released, you push this down and pull out. If you can't get it like that, uh, I just take them out. So the, the silver thing will be removed from the top and then it'll slide, the plug will slide right off and then you just go ahead and put that silver bar back. But what you're supposed to do is push down and then pull out. So, uh, but yeah, that is now disconnected. Let's go ahead and get the horn. Well, the horn disconnected, and then we will probably be ready to jump inside the car because as you can tell, we're going to have a lot of room for that brake booster to come forward. Uh, I don't actually think I'm going to remove any of these wires. Um, if you don't have to, don't. Anything with like the computer and stuff is just, it always sketches me out. So we are going to leave that there, uh, but the next thing we will do after I get the horn is jump in the car and get the brake booster detached and get the master cylinder detached. So I'll meet you guys inside the car. All right, here comes the not so fun part. So you have to climb underneath where your pedal assembly is. And let's see if I can do this here. If you look up here, that thing right there, that uh, the rod that is attached to your brake pedal itself is your booster. So you have four 13 millimeter nuts. So there's one back there highlighted, two on this side and the other one's up there in the corner, obviously. Um, but we have to get those off and then we have to remove the part of the rod assembly back here in order to move this forward, which actually I might, you might not have to do that. Uh, as soon as it's the simplest, it didn't say anything about that in the instructions, so maybe you won't have to. But uh, maybe once we, we get that undone, we can just pull that straight out and be all right. If you needed more room, I'm sure you could disconnect it. Uh, however, over here, this is your master cylinder. So this is the thing we're trying to replace. Um, as you can see, the two copper-looking uh, flat spots are actually the studs that go on the other side uh, where the nuts are in the firewall in order to remove this. So if you follow this, there's a rod, the plastic rod right here that attaches to your clutch pedal, and we're going to have to remove that. So um, I can't do this with one hand. Lord. But, well, nope, can't do it. Uh, that right there is what we're trying to remove, uh, that little green speck up there. So once you disconnect that, then we're going to go back on the outside. We're going to pull the brake booster away from the firewall, and then we should gain access to both nuts on the back side of the master in order to pull it out. So let me get these undone, and then I'll meet you on the other side. Quick update. Uh, as I was down here and I was explaining that you probably won't have to remove the brake booster rod off the, the brake pedal. Uh, it's super easy, so you might as well go ahead and do it because it's gonna make things a lot easier. So um, the rod attached to the brake pedal and a clip holds it down. All you have to do is swivel this clip around until you can grab the bottom, so right here, and push up and then it just pops right off. You have a washer on the other side of that as well. So go ahead and grab the washer, make sure you don't lose either of these things. And then um, for the clutch pedal with, with the master, all I did was use this and pry uh, the little prongs. So it's a, it's a black piece and uh, it's got like claws on either side. So like little two, two little fingers that hold it uh, onto the cap of the clutch pedal itself. So you just pried those out and then lifted the rod off of there. And now we're going to go ahead and tackle the four nuts on the back side of the brake booster. And that way we can pull the brake booster out further from the firewall, uh, which is why we removed everything, all the bracketry and stuff in the first place. So let's get that done and I'll meet you on the other side. All right. Well, that was, uh, that was not fun. I'm a, I'm a big man and, uh, yeah, well, we got them all off and, uh, it would have been a lot easier if I had a battery operated 90 degree ratchet, but I got them. So even with some, some hand tools and a little bit of time, you can too. Anyway, if you look up here, you can see 
the brake booster and I have all the nuts off the brake booster. I also went ahead and took the rod off of, I can't see, so I hope you guys can see, but the rod that's attached to the brake pedal, I went ahead and disconnected that. Let's see if I can get a better angle. No, not really. Well, there's a rod that's attached to the booster that goes to the brake pedal. And yeah, right there, I guess you kind of can. But it is unattached. And then uh, also the, the master cylinder right there. It is also unattached. And like I said, it just popped it off there. So now we get to go back to the outside of the firewall and uh, undo that guy and that one right there. So let's go do it. All right, so with everything disconnected, this is out of the way, your horn's out of the way, the booster should slide right out. Now, I will tell you, never, ever, ever disconnect these brake lines uh, from the booster. When you're doing this job, you don't need to do it, it's unnecessary, and if you do it, you're gonna have to bleed everything, so it's just not worth it. So, let's see if I can do this one hand here. Okay, so it definitely, it definitely moves, but I might have to, I might have to do some finagling off camera, but let's get that removed and then we can finally have access to our master, which is, he's hidden down there still, but let me get this booster out of the way. All right, so I got the brake booster moved out of the way just a little bit, and now we can finally see, it's not gonna focus, the master. The master is uh, right down there with the two rusty nuts. Two rusty bolts down there. Let's see here. Maybe. There we go. All right, so that's the thing we're trying to get to. So you have to remove uh, both of those rusty nuts on this side, and I do believe they are 13s. I'll have to go double check, but that's what we're trying to get to. Uh, I also ended up removing my, I believe it's a PCM, Please correct me in the comments if it's not, but I believe it's just a computer, uh, but I, it's just two uh, torque bits, or uh, star bits, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't think this is necessary for you guys to remove, uh, but I did it just so I could show you guys down there in that hole. So let's go ahead and get those two 13 millimeter nuts off, and uh, we can go ahead and remove that entirely. I do believe the next step, um, on the, the paperwork says that we have to get under the car. So uh, you can discard the nuts and not be reused from under the car, disconnect the clutch. Okay, so since we have to get under the car after we disconnect the master, um, I'm gonna leave a link in the description to all the parts I have today and um, also on where the jack points are in our vehicles. Uh, please be safe. Um, vehicles are heavy. So I'll leave a, uh, a link in the description below showing where the jack points are in this vehicle. Um, but that looks like that's going to be the next thing. So I will see you guys once I get the car jacked up. Okay, so now I have officially removed both of those nuts that were holding on the master cylinder down there, which is going to be almost impossible to see. But um, both nuts have been removed. There's uh, one stud right there through the wires, and there's the other stuff through the wires. Uh, both nuts have been removed. So now, as per the instructions, it tells you to get under the car, and we're gonna remove the lines. So, let's see where it says. Um, uh, number seven, from under the car, disconnect the clutch master's rubber hose from the hard line going into the bell housing by pulling the wire clip outwards. Uh, eight, unsnap the hard line from the white clip on the body of the car. Nine, the line from the master cylinder to the slave cylinder is two pieces and separates with a fitting like the connection at the slave that you previously disconnected. This is somewhat difficult to access since it's under the brake booster. Disconnect the line here. So I'm not really sure what it's referring to because uh, I haven't disconnected any lines yet at all. Um, but it's saying that under the brake booster... It looks like there's going to be a line that splits off because the brake booster and the, the master cylinder both share fluid. Um, so I would assume somewhere under there is going to be 
what we're looking for. So I'm going to hop under the car. Like I said, um, be sure to know your jack points. I'll, I will post uh, in the description below, but we're going to jack the car up and then uh, I'll meet you under there and we'll, we'll figure out what lines they're talking about. All right, we're a little tight under here, but that's the front of the car. Your steering rack, here's my header uh, that I've ran over something that's disgusting that's made my header terrible gross, but I think the white clip they're referring to is that clip right there. Um, so this hard line right here looks to be what goes into the master. So this comes down, this is a my O2 that I extended and zip tied to it, but this comes down into a soft line. The soft line, let's see if we can get that to focus. The soft line then comes back, wraps around into this fitting, which is where your new line is gonna go into. That's the, the connector for the new fitting that runs into your transmission, into your slave cylinder. So this is what we are trying to take apart. Um, so once we get, Sorry. Once we get this line off and disconnected right here, and then we get the master out, the new line is going to come right down here and connect in down here. So that's what we have to do now. Okay. Quick little update. It's leaking, so it'll be hard to shoot so I don't get it on the phone. But uh, this clip, this is the bottom of the car so this this way is the bottom facing down uh, well i guess the ground i'm sorry so this is the bottom of the car this way is the ground and this clip you just have to get something a little little tiny baby screwdriver in there pop it out and then as you pop it out this just comes right off so super simple but again i'm more of a visual learner so this uh the clip goes towards the ground right and then this comes right out, but be careful because it will start leaking. So, all right, now we're going back up top. All right, so only after un unhooking the master line, master cylinder line uh, from underneath the car, do I understand what the instructions meant. So the connection we just, or the I guess the connection we just undid, under the car is the same exact connection that's under the brake booster for half the line. So now that we've got that one disconnected, we come back up top, disconnect the same style line from underneath the brake booster. That way we can remove the master cylinder completely. And just, we'll go over here and check real quick. But we did eight, so that was clip of the body. Yep, and then nine. Uh, the line from the master cylinder to the slave cylinder is two pieces, separates with a fitting connection to the slave. You previously disconnected, which is where we are. Uh, this is somewhat difficult to access. This is under the brake booster. Disconnect this line here and then remove the factory master cylinder and half the line together. The other half of the line can be removed from under the car. Okay, so now it looks like that's all we have to do in order to get the old one out before we can start. Because number 10 is installing the new aluminum adapter bracket uh, with supplied 13 mil nuts. So let's get that line disconnected, get the old master out. We can start putting in the new one. Okay, just to show you, this is the line that they are wanting you to disconnect. So, oh. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get you guys down there to show you here. Well, it's that line back there. Let's see if I can get it to focus. That line back there, that's the one they're wanting you to disconnect. So just go ahead. Let me see if I can't zoom in, actually. There we go. So it's that line right there. So it's, uh, if you're looking at your, uh, your brake booster, it's going to be on the left-hand side, uh, close to your manifold or your, your head or whatever, whichever you have. But it's uh, that fitting right there. And, and in, in the same way, it looks like on the right-hand side, so closest to the driver's side, you're going to pull that little metal clip uh, towards the driver's side and it should disconnect that line. So let's get that disconnected. All right, there she is. That's what you're trying to dig out of there. So as you can tell, uh, I did leave the line on. Um, 
I think it probably would be easier to have disconnected this or just cut this line. Uh, I tend to keep all my OEM parts, um, especially if they're not bad, just as a just in case. I don't ever think I'm going to be able to demod this car and sell it. Uh, I'll probably have this car for the rest of my life. However, I do just like having the OEM stuff, uh, like I said, as a just in case. So this has now been removed. Uh, this is the top half of the line that they were talking about uh, that's been disconnected. So now you can go under the car and remove the rest of that line that connected up beside the bell housing. So um, I believe the next step in this process is going ahead and putting on the aluminum adapter um, and then getting the new one in. So I'm sure this video is probably already 20 or 30 minutes long and we are, we are almost the halfway point. So um, after we get this installed, we have to get it adjusted, which I can show you guys how to do as well. Um, but it is getting kind of late, so I'm probably going to wait till tomorrow, finish this video tomorrow. But um, yeah, so let's go get under the car, uh, pull the rest of the line out of there, and then uh, get that aluminum adapter installed. All right, so now that that is out, um, we are going to install this new uh, aluminum adapter so uh, to fit the GTOs. So um, it goes in there like this. Uh, these are where, um, you know, no, I don't remember how that's orientated. I think it's like this. We'll go double check. Uh, but you cannot use your old nuts because these nuts have a shoulder on them. And the new nuts, the supplied nuts, do not have a shoulder. And that way it allows the master to slide through the center. So let's go ahead and get this installed. Um, the gold washers, or I'm sorry, the gold nuts uh, were on the, the gold studs, which is how I'm going to leave them. So the uh, stainless or the, the steel nuts here will go into the aluminum adapter, and that, that is how I'm going to have it. Um, but let me show you where this goes. So if we go back over here and look down in that hole, it's going to be right there. This is just going to be an out of focus mess, but that's, that's the hole, um, where you just pulled your master from. So let's go ahead and get this, uh, aluminum adapter, aluminum adapter installed. All right. With a couple extensions and a bunch of swivel sockets, uh, I was able to get both of these on here with a ratchet. Um, I also put some blue thread locker on there. Um, it's a medium strength. Uh, it's not a red. Red's going to be more of a permanent. Blue is more of a, uh, a medium strength, I guess. Um, I've seen a lot of horror stories where people go to install one of these and then uh, they complain and they say that theirs was bad or, or what have you. Um, but it's really just improper installation and not torquing things down um, enough. Um, and, and then this is flexing or moving in and out, which is causing play, which, you know, in turn is making your pedal feel worse or, you know, blowing out the, the master cylinder itself. So uh, this is installed though. Um, the adapter is on there. So now it's telling me that we're going to go ahead and install or put the master in, but not install uh, because we have to um, potentially, once we get the, the line fitted on there, might have to pull the master cylinder back out towards the motor um, to get the line fitted. So let's go ahead and get the master put in there and then we can get the line on and, and start feeding it to the bottom. All right, so that was probably the most frustrating part of getting this master cylinder on. It's a pretty tight spot back here and trying to get the line fed onto the master after it was installed was annoying so I took it out and then put the line on and then tried to put it back in there and it was wedging so then I, I was finally able to get it but then I had to tighten the the gold nuts up and it turned out to be pretty annoying too so it's been way too long me messing with this but it's it's finally done so now we're going to go inside the car and we're going to install the adjustable rod and this guy right here. So if you look down here, let's see here. 13, so tighten the cylinder to the bracket using supplied gold nuts. 14, inside the car, install the jam nut, which this is the jam nut, um, and clutch clevis that attaches, I'm sorry, so the jam nut's already installed. The jam nut is is the, a singular nut on the threaded rod. Um, I would assume maybe this is the clevis. 
clutch clevis that attaches the unit to the pedal. Okay, yep. Uh, install the clevis on the pedal with the pedal positioned near the middle of its travel. So further adjustment will be done later as necessary. Under the car, install the supplied custom fitting, uh, which is the hard line, the, the press on hard line under the car, and then route the braided, braided line away from sharp edges, moving parts, headers, etc. Uh, tighten it to the fitting you just installed. All right, so let's go ahead and hop in the car now and we'll, we'll install the clevis. Um, I'll have to find that. But uh, that goes over uh, the clevis and the pedal to make sure it doesn't pop out. And then we will adjust the, the pedal travel to the middle of its, of its uh, range of motion. All right, so back inside the car, you're gonna want to locate the rod for your master cylinder that you just installed. So it's up there. Jeez, I'm a terrible cameraman. But it's right there, jam nut is installed. So the clevis, which is this guy, is gonna go on next. Now, in the instructions, it says that you want your clutch pedal to be about half of the distance that it travels, right? So this is all the way out. That's all the way in, so you want it to be about right here. You want it to, uh, to be half of its distance. So if that's out, that's all the way in, about half is right there. So that's what I'm gonna aim for. And I'm gonna put the clevis on, and then the locking washer that holds it onto the uh, pedal assembly itself. So let me get this threaded on. And you're not gonna tighten down your jam nut just yet because you will adjust it uh, later on. So this is gonna come on and off. And then you're gonna tighten your jam nut down. Then you're gonna put the lock washer on to finish it out. Um, but let's go ahead and get this installed then. All right, so like the instructions said, the clutch pedal is now at about half of its of its original travel distance. Uh, normally, it should be about even with your brake pedal, but as you can see, the uh, the clevis is installed. The jam nut is back there behind it, and there is no lock washer on there because we will be adjusting it. So the biggest part of this entire install is the adjustment at the end. The adjustment at the end is really the crucial part. You can just throw this in here. You can you can make it the factory length or, you know, match match the pedals up and go on about your day. That's really not what this is about. The the factory one is not great. Um, the diaphragm's small. Uh, the, the travel distance isn't great. It doesn't let the clutch come all the way back out. A lot of the times if you're, you know, either braking hard or shifting a lot. So really the, the main focus of this after we get this install is going to be the adjustment at the very end. So um, now that this is done, we get to go into the car and we're gonna route our new uh, line and get everything put back in. I'll probably go grab some zip ties and just make sure it's out of the way. But let's go ahead and jack the car up and get under there. All right, we're under the car now, and I routed my line closer to the frame rail on the driver's side, so it, it misses the steering shaft, okay? And then I have headers, so I do not have this bracket that sits here, uh, which in turn was the perfect little place to put a zip tie, um, because this is hollow inside, so I just curled the zip tie up and was able to put it through there. Then it runs in between those two bolts, but it's pretty snug, so hopefully I, it doesn't rub it through, but if it does, I'll come back and check on it here in a couple months. And then it loops around, and there is a very nice curve. Um, it's not kinked or anything. It is a braided stainless line, so it's not kinked or anything. It doesn't feel like it at least. And then straight into that fitting again. So as you can see, it's in the fitting, and then once in the fitting, the I depress the little uh, metal thing here and it's it fits in there snug so it looks like everything's good under here uh, i will say though that i was at a certain time i was having a problem with that wire right there touching the header and it's a knock sensor and it's a common issue on gto's so while you're under here there you go while you're under here uh, take a look and make sure that's not hitting your header because it looks like mine is again, and I definitely don't want that to burn through. So now I'm gonna have to find a place to hook that up and, and keep it out of the way so it's not touching the header. But yeah, uh, I think we're 
about wrapped up under here, so it might be time to get back in the car and go ahead and put the booster back on. All right, now that all that is done, it's time to start the reinstallation process. So go ahead and double check and make sure that your master is good and tightened down. We're gonna go ahead and reinstall the brake booster, um, connect everything back up, reinstall the bracketry, and then we will have to reuse this um, for the new reservoir, or for the new master, I'm sorry. Um, this is the part that gets reused. And there is a little rubber cap on the master, and you're going to install this, and uh, this is where that hose goes, and so you can still fill up your reservoir. So this is just giving you a little extra fluid um, in the case of, you know, like I said, you're out, you're out doing pulls, and you're shifting a lot, or you're braking a lot. This is going to make sure that you still have plenty of fluid in your reservoir to continue to do those things. And you don't get any fade, you know, or your, your clutch not disengaging on the way or your brakes not working. So let's go ahead and get everything reinstalled. And once everything is back together, I will continue with the next steps. All right, back inside the car, we are now going to reinstall the brake booster. So just those four nuts. And then uh, you have to be sure you get the um, booster rod onto the brake pedal itself. And then remember, uh, washer goes on first, and then this little locking mechanism. So I'm going to go ahead and reinstall um, the brake booster, and uh, we will go from there. All right, brake booster is installed. All the nuts on there, and then the rod. <laughs> I'm terrible at this. Well, where's that? The rod right there. And remember, you have the washer and the, the little clip. So put the washer on, and then the clip kind of, uh, you hook it in and then push it over the, to the other side, and that's it. So as of right now, we still have the, uh, the lock washer for the uh, cl uh, clevis, I think is what it was called. But, uh, and the pedal's still back because, like I said, this is going to be uh, later after the installation is 100% is buttoned up. So let's go back under the hood and get all that stuff buttoned up. All right, we're nearing the home stretch. So this is uh, the reservoir that's going to go on the master. This is a worm gear or worm clamp or, you know, however you want to say this thing. But what is going to happen is... Now that you have everything buttoned back up, let me find a good place to set this. Now that you have everything buttoned back up, so PCM is reinstalled. All the bracketry over here is reinstalled. What we have to do now, horn still uninstalled, but what we have to do now is put that white reservoir on top of the master. So it's back there in that corner. You see a little rubber cap right there in the center, but that rubber cap comes off. This gets put on there, and then you use your factory line right here. So it says cutting the line uh, to, to fit best is what is required. So we are going to cut this to length, and then you use the worm gear uh, in order to attach it to the new reservoir, that white reservoir we're going to install. So let me go ahead and get that all buttoned up, and then I will be right back. Okay, so... Uh, the reservoir for the master cylinder and the reservoir for the fluid for the master cylinder has now been installed. Um, I don't think this is the correct hose. I bought this a long time ago, probably uh, last year at some point. I just never got around to installing it. Um, car's up for winter because I live in Indiana and I'm wanting to drive it, so I figured this would be a good time while it's up. Anywho, uh, I don't think that's the correct hose, but... Uh, if it causes me problems, I, I will go get another one, but, um, it does say to put a zip tie down that, on that end and then use the, the worm gear for this end. So this is what it looks like. And then now all I have to do is reinstall my horn and the strut tower bar, and then get a friend to help me bleed the system. I do not have a, um, bleeder, like a power bleeder or whatever to do it myself. So I will 
come back tomorrow to finish the video, um, get a friend out here and show you how to bleed the system and adjust your rod. So see you then. All right, everyone, it's the next day. And uh, I had a buddy come over and help me bleed the clutch. Um, bleeding the clutch procedure isn't, uh, isn't that bad. All you have to do is lift the car up. And like I said, I'll post um, a link in the description for where you need to uh, jack the car up at. Um, but I just lifted up this side entirely and then got under there. Uh, the line that fed into the transmission um, right above where it actually goes into the transmission, about two inches above that, is a hole. Um, you should be able to visibly see it once you're under the car. Uh, you'll need to get an 11 millimeter socket um, and fill around up there. Uh, I took a video uh, on my iPhone in uh, the 0.5, the wide angle lens, to get a really good image of it. Um, but an 11 millimeter socket will slide right over. And then all you have to do is loosen it, um, have your buddy press down on the clutch completely, and then you tighten it back up, repeat that procedure uh, until you, you get clean fluid out. Now, I had a problem where for some reason, well, I didn't bench bleed the master. Um, I just didn't do that. And uh, I was having a problem getting fluid into the master. So what I was doing was squeezing the hose or the line to let some of that fluid in. And then after we did that, um, we were able to bleed the clutch successfully. So um, it was about every two times that we bled or, or cracked the bleeder that we would need to refill the fluid. So just keep an eye on that. Um, you can buy a, a tick performance uh, power bleeder, uh, which they sell on their website, but um, it was I was already too deep in to wait. So just had a buddy help and that's it. So now what you're gonna wanna do is make sure uh, your pedal is still in a good position. So again, about halfway uh, of its travel distance. And then you're going to want to start the car and put it in neutral and try to push it into gear. Um, so if you cannot get it into first gear, if the car continues to roll, you have to take the clevis back off, uh, unwind it a little bit, put it back on, which is going to bring the pedal towards you, and then try again. And then um, I believe in the, in the instructions it says that once you have a good pedal feel, go out and do some spirited driving. Um, and then make sure that you're able to shift into every gear. Your clutch is, is disengaging. And if it is not, go ahead and undo the clevis just a little bit more. Really fine incremental at that point because you don't ever want to get it out too far. If it comes out too far, it could damage the pressure plate um, and will cause you a lot of headache in the long run. So be sure uh, once you have uh, the ability to push the clutch in, put it in gear, and it stay in gear and not roll around, uh, with the clutch engaged, fully in, engaged, then go out and do some spirited driving and make your, your fine adjustments after that. But that's what we're going to do right now. And I will show you the finished product and where my pedal sits once everything's done. Okay. So it's been a few days. I was able, uh, to bleed the clutch and was able to get the car out of the garage and drive it around. Um, I was able to start adjusting the master cylinder, which is awesome. Um, so all you have to do is, you know, with the clevis on there and the not having your lock washer and not tightening down your lock nut, you're able to just pop it right off, give it a couple spins, put it back on and uh, continue from there. So that's what I've been doing for the last few days. Um, I, I have it almost dialed in. I think I'm going to do it um, probably two more rotations out, um, put that on and drive it. Um, I do have the lock washer on. I've been driving it to and from work. And it's done fine. It's never popped off. So I don't believe that should be a problem.